Oh. <laughs> Black wood. So I don't know if you can see these little buggers. Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. Glad you're here with me. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm down here in East Sacramento, a beautiful neighborhood here near downtown Sacramento. And we're in a house that was built in the 1920s. And we have a shower that's leaking through the ceiling. So let's go inside and check it out. We got like original moldings. And to see this craftsmanship that's a hundred years old now is really neat. We don't work in these really old houses too often, but you'll notice in a lot of these, they took a lot of care and pride. Um, but yeah, so the ceiling, you can see up here, we got a leak and that's from the upstairs shower. The shower's uh, right up above here. So we got everything kind of set up here. Ronnie's getting set up. This tile work was, was done by a contractor friend of theirs who was a tile guy. I know that it's a floated install. It's got a hot mop, so I'm really interested to see how this thing leaked. So the, the tile guy has since retired. He didn't want to have anything to do with this now, so they hired us to come out and figure out what's going on. But what we're gonna end up doing is taking all of this out, take the tub out, and they just want one big walk-in shower. So, uh, I'm gonna help Ronnie get this pony wall out, get the shower pan out so we can see how this shower pan failed. It should come out now. I'm just gonna walk this down. This thing's gonna shatter. Oh man, where you want me to throw it? I'll throw it Try right to here, throw man. it right there. Okay, ready? In my, yep. One, two. Perfect. Perfect. Couldn't Good job. Been. So yeah, we set our, our dump trailer up right in the driveway and then we're using the roof here. It has this access door out to the roof, which works out nice. We'll get this little mini sledge and start beating on this wall here. See what's underneath it. Got my gloves, hearing protection, sunglasses for eye protection. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Check this out. A couple wax with the sledgehammer and we're already into some major water damage. Gotta look at this stuff. Ugh. Black wood. Brought it out. Yeah, this stuff just crumbles. More soil than wood at this point. But yeah, it's like almost like the, it's almost like the mortar and tile is the only thing holding this wall up. So yeah, it's a floated install. Chicken wire, mortar. See, there's the float there. I don't know, there was no penetrations on here. I don't know why this wall was so bad. No waterproofing. Yeah, there's no waterproofing. This was a, a float. There was no tar paper or anything. So usually, Usually um, we can do without waterproofing on the walls because the water just sheds off it. But once it hits a horizontal surface, we really need to waterproof this. Um, otherwise, you know, water can sit, find a crack in the grout or, you know, the shower door sometimes poke holes in it. But once that water has a horizontal plane, it just soaks in. So this, this whole thing probably should have been hot mopped or at least have some tar paper on it. This was done before they had Red Guard and stuff like that. We usually use a topical waterproofing, but 
Yeah, see that's the two by four. And it's just, that's what's happened to it. This chicken wire, once it gets uh, a lot of water in it, it actually rusts and comes apart. So you see there, the chicken wire just kind of rusted out. So it loses its structure too. So we'll keep on tearing this out here. Okay, so you see all this massive water damage here. This all could have been avoided by taking a few extra steps in waterproofing. Luckily now we have tilecoach.com. So you can go there, either schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me or sign up for the team membership where you'll have access to our advice forums and ask the right questions before you begin your project so that this doesn't happen. We'll see you over there. Okay, so we got all the tile surround removed. Now it's time to get this tub out of here. It's really hard for me to make YouTube videos and wear a respirator over my face. That's why I'm not. Most of the time we do, so wear that respirator. We also have a really nice air scrubber that's sucking everything up, filtering it and blowing it out. So let's get into this curb. Kind of mushy, huh? Wood is all rotten right here. All right, so let's see what's under this curb top here, if I can get it off. The curb is obviously rotten. We have mortar bed install, chicken wire, mortar, and a hot mop. And the wood is dry rotted. But I think maybe what happened since this pony wall was all rotted, I think the two by fours, you know, the ends of the two by fours, the wood curb, I think that water just sucked into the curb and rotted it. But I'll know a little more here. So here is the face of the curb. There's termite damage in it, it looks like. You can see here that's uh, all termite droppings, leftovers of termites. You see they burrowed their way through the wood. I think this must be their poop or something. Yeah, it's kind of like a, looks like salt and pepper sand. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but it's leftovers from the termites. But that's what termite damage looks like. They burrow and eat the wood, uh, but I don't see any live termites or eggs or anything. So they probably had the termites fumigated and killed, but this is the leftovers. Termites love wet wood. They just, that's their thing, man. Wet decaying. Uh, Douglas fir especially. It's Doug fir, they really like to eat. Yeah, this entire curb is, oh, there's some termites. There they are, let's see. So I don't know if you can see these little buggers. Oh, they're bigger than I thought. Yeah. There's a little termite on the end of my razor knife here. 
Uh, hopefully there's not too many more of those guys. So that's not a good sign. If there's live termites in this, uh, they might need to get an exterminator in here to uh, take care of it, depending on how bad it is and if they're into the other walls. Hopefully they're just into this curb. But, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why we always like to use foam curbs or masonry curbs. Wood curbs just always seem to rot out. They seem to, you know, once water, even water from outside the shower will get in and it'll start to wick it up. This had other problems because the pony wall wasn't waterproofed right, but uh, definitely wood curbs just, because I rarely tear out a shower without having some sort of issues with the wood curb. Okay, so now that I have the curb off, we can get this pan lifted up and out of here and really see what's going on under this floor. You gotta focus on yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah. Also, here's another shameless plug. If you like the work pants I'm wearing, I'll put a link in the description, show you how to get them and get 15% off. I love these true work pants. See how stretchy and nice and easy they are to work in? I love them. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, we're gonna do a little drain inspection here and see how they protected the weep holes or dealt with the weep holes and the mortar's still wet, which can be a problem that has nowhere to go. But I don't see any wheat protection at all. No gravel around the wheat poles, uh, nothing. Ronnie, can you get me the vacuum and we'll vacuum around this? So I don't even see any wheat poles in this drain, at least none that are open. And that's the main problem. I have yet to tear out one of these hot mop cast iron drains that we use up here in Northern California and seeing them working functionally. I hope my videos helped educate people on if you're going to use these systems you need lots of wheat protection which is either gravel or crushed tile or spacers something to allow the water to weep down into those weep holes and also to clear out those weep holes really good and these drains in general just aren't good. They always get clogged up. Okay, so here's the drain. I just pulled it straight out of there. You see there's no that's supposed to be a weep hole. That is supposed to be a weep hole. But when the hot moppers and the tile guys don't clear out these weep holes, for one, the mortar bed is just going to get saturated and place for icky things to grow in there. Uh, but for two, that's when the water starts wicking up over the curb. You get cracked tile, efflorescence, cracked grout. So the simplest little things, again, this is something I would love to coach you through if you're building a shower. Don't make these mistakes that are so easy. All you have to do is just plug. This one I can't even get to punch through because there's so much mortar in it. But I'll show you what. There we go. So, so that is what a weak hole is supposed to look like. Not that. <laughs> I'll clear this one out too. This one just filled with tar. So there you go. There's another weak hole. And then the last one, the last one is this guy here. Again, completely clogged with tar. And 
that's what it's supposed to look like right there. Now we have wheat poles in the drain. Tile failures give our trade a bad name. I'm doing my best to show you not only other people's failures, but when I make a mistake, I show you those as well. So you can learn from them. You can get better. Our whole industry can get better. So I'm really glad you spent some time with me today watching this video. So before I go, make sure to watch those next videos coming up. I'm sure you like them if you like this one. And I love you. I love being your tile coach. And we'll see you on the next video.